Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Brayden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the channel where I not only tell you what's going on in the gun world, but I also tell you how we're going to work together to fix it. Tonight, we're going to dive behind the gun control curtain in Illinois, because it turns out there's a few little rumblings around the new Illinois assault weapons ban that they're pushing forward at breakneck speed, as they usually do when it comes to gun control in gun control regimes. Everything is going to be linked in the description box below, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think about this one, because there's a lot of stuff in this video for those that live behind the blue wall of gun control. Now, I'm going to say a quick word from SDI, and then we are going to hit it. Now, I know a lot of you out there like to upgrade and modify your own guns. And if you're looking to turn a hobby into a career, Sonoran Desert Institute can help. The online programs at SDI cover everything from gunsmithing, ballistics, woodworking and finishes, shooting sports management, and more. Plus, all the tools and materials are shipped directly to your door. There's never been a better time to turn that hobby into a career, so what are you waiting for? There's a link in the description box below, and thank you so much to SDI for sponsoring this content. Now, my brothers and sisters, we are going through this, and if you agree with this message, A, please like this and send to somebody who this applies to, pretty much anybody in a gun control state. And also, we'd love to have you subscribe. We need as many people as we can to get in the fold to push the level of freedom forward on a daily basis. And any consideration on that, I thank you so much. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, before I get into the actual article we're citing here, I want to talk to the people who live behind the blue wall of gun control. Basically, California's, Illinois, New York's, pretty much most of New England, anywhere there's a really tyrannical approach to gun rights versus gun control. Everything that we've been seeing, the future of the Second Amendment, would not be possible without you. A lot of people in my comments sometimes say, hey, pray for me, I live in New York, or I live in California, or I don't have any options because I live in New Jersey. Understand that without the injury that you are suffering, your rights are the ones that are suffering, without that possibility, we would not be able to be pushing so hard forward in the Supreme Court cases, in the magazine bans, in the AR bans, because the more that they do these things, the more it brings light and profile to them, which forces them into the court system, which makes the remedy come quicker. Understand how important you are in this fight, because this could not happen without you. And with that said, let's dive into Illinois, because this, this is interesting, and I want to hear your thoughts. Semi-auto gun ban, only part of the solution, says the Illinois House. Hmm. Keep in mind, this is Illinois. This is a gun control state, through and through, driven by Chicago, a gun control city, which has the most gun crime in the world. Anyway, so what we're going to dive into here is the obvious conundrum. If you have the strictest gun control laws in the nation, or some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation, how are you having gun crime? And if truly are guns the only issue here, then... How do you need something else to supplement that? Because again, I thought it was only the guns. It doesn't make sense on any level, and that's what we're going to dive into, because they say the, the darndest things in the AP. Springfield, Illinois. At an Illinois House committee hearing Thursday, researchers and community activists said having fewer firearms in communities will help stop bloodshed. From the persistent gun violence haunting Chicago, irony, to the mass situations like the one in the suburban July 4th parade. But this must be followed by programs to change attitudes and give people alternatives. Does that sound like it might be a problem here and here more so than here? Because even the state house is sitting there saying we're going to ban everything. We're going to raise the ages. We're going to expand red flag laws. And we'll get to that in a second. Doesn't it seem like that would solve the problem if they're only blaming guns? But no, no. Now there's additional things that need to be done on the back end. Can't you reverse that? Or would that interrupt fundraising? Yeah, let's keep getting into it. Because I might get spicy. I don't know yet. The House Judiciary Criminal Law Committee is conducting hearings on the proposed legislation, which would ban semi-automatic weapons. That's a whole lot of weapons. Restrict gun possession by those younger than 21, raising the age of ownership. And toughen so-called red flag laws, allowing removal of guns. And it basically makes it a year into six months. I mean, from six months to a year. I could go into a lot of those things. I'm just going to hit on the one that's the most important and obvious to me. Every single time that they've introduced the red flag laws in any single state, you're talking about New York, talking about California, any state that has red flag laws, there's 19 of them. Every single time it is sold as a common sense solution. And it's a small circle of people, you know, family members and cops. And they are the ones that can initiate extreme risk protection orders. That's what we have to do to save lives. And every single time after they pass it, that list of people seems to kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger until that no longer works. And now it's expanding the, the time frame. They're doubling it from six months to a year. At what point do the sacrifices of due process have to supersede 
the in crazy infringements that you were imposing upon the people of Illinois, New York, and California. This is one of the key points that you have to understand about red flag laws. It starts this big and they keep feeding the monster until it gets this big. California by itself has over tripled in extreme risk protection orders as they expand that pool. Anyway, that's one of my own little soapboxes. Let's keep going. There are more than enough Democrats in both the House and the Senate to approve the legislation without Republican assistance. Here comes the grumbles. But firearm restraints are always a tough sell for Democrats from central and southern Illinois, where hunters and sports shooters see guns far differently than their counterparts in urban areas like Chicago. Chicago, the gun-free zone with most gun kind. Anyway, keep going. I'm going to keep on doing that because that really irks me. So what they're saying right here is you've got Democrats on different levels of the spectrum. You've got the moderates in the south and the central, and then you have the extreme left in um, Chicago. If they can't rally all of the, the Democrats in the south to the central part of Illinois, they're not going to pass this ban. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to pass. I mean, they have the advantage. But it is important that the AP is bringing this up because what do we always cover on this channel? The media always carries the water for the Democrats on it when it comes to gun control and most things, to be quite honest with you. But in this case, why would they be putting this out? That doesn't make any sense. It's not even up for a vote yet. Why are they laying the groundwork for a potential issue? Keep that in mind. Let's keep going because they've got even more undermining to do. But even supporters of the legislation emphasize that it takes more than a gun ban. Again, questions thought it was only the gun. Programs and professionals are needed to help young people escape the streets and change their attitudes about the future. Again, hearts and minds versus what's in your hand. This is in direct conflict with what we're being told and sold on a day-to-day -day basis from the gun control lobby and the gun control Democrats in the Senate and the House federally. But let's keep going. Got, got this, this part's crazy. Quote, I'm all for the ban of assault weapons. I wish all guns were off the street, but that's not reality, said Joseph Saunders, an activist and mentor on Chicago's South Side. Quote, we've got hearts that need to be changed, minds that need to be changed, he said. If all guns were non-existent and the heart and the mind have not changed, they're going to go with knives, anything they can pick up. An activist who is all for an assault weapons ban in the heart of Chicago is saying they're just going to do it with knives, fists, hammers, or feet, just like the statistics are showing. This is everything right here. Even the supporters know it's not going to do anything, but it's going to be a fundraising opportunity for Democrats and the gun control lobby across the nation. And then it's going to be struck down unconstitutional because, again, going back to the profile part. But I got one more thing for you, and then we'll wrap it. The proposal would ban semi-automatic weapons and 50 caliber guns and cartridges. It does not offer a definition of the firearms that qualify. Instead, it lists 49 specific types of brands or rifles, including AR-15 and AK-47, and 20 types of pistols. People under the age of 21 can obtain an FOID card. They won't be able to anymore, but don't worry. They can hunt as long as they're under the supervision of someone who has an FOID card. That's two layers. Woo! I feel so safe. A court-ordered firearm restraining order could be issued for a year instead of six months. The bill would also bolster the power of Illinois State Police to target trafficking of illegal guns from outside state lines working with federal authorities, which again kind of flies in the face of a gun control zone because if you have a gun control zone, guns can't go there. There's clearly a barrier. Pick up the sarcasm. Now, in this video, I've hit a few things. I've been kind of sarcastic. I've been kind of tongue-in-cheek. But the whole point here is if they're forecasting and broadcasting that there are some people who are like, yeah, this is kind of pointless, and you're going towards the road of higher profile on AR bans, pretty soon the Supreme Court is going to take up AR and mag bans, and then they have nothing to fundraise on. Because if they continue to put in the spotlight on these things, they're going to get more and more profile attention until the Supreme Court says, yeah, we need to talk about this. And that is where this is going, even from our interview with the NSSF general counsel, who said he expects it to be in the courts three to five years. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.